Welcome back. Now, the independent inquiry announced today into the UK's handling of the pandemic is sure to examine whether early warning signs were missed. It's a question being asked right around the world. And a new book, The Premonition, A Pandemic Story, focuses on a motley group of scientists who claim they saw the COVID outbreak coming. Its author is Michael Lewis. You may remember he also wrote Moneyball and The Big Short. The theme of foresight is common among his books. So that's where our conversation began. It was very like a book I did called The Big Short, where you had this about the financial crisis, where you had these people who had been preparing for decades or more uh, for just this event and who, who, who could see before the event occurred that when it occurred, we we're going to have all kinds of problems. And then they were diagnosing the United Kingdom. They were diagnosing the United States. But our, our paths were remarkably similar. And tell me a little bit about this uh, group of, of misfits that you found. At the center of them is, is the character named Carter Mesher, who was who sort of reinvented pandemic planning in, during the Bush administration in the White House. So this, the strategies that countries have been using, the social distancing and the closing of various institutions, all of this arises from work that he and a, a small group of doctors did uh, way back when. And then you had, once the Trump administration basically said they weren't going to manage it at, at the federal level, it was up to the governors to, to, to manage the pandemic, you had this group of doctors. They, they were they, they, they're kind of a secret group, uh, called themselves the Wolverines, who were stationed in various parts of American society and who were running a shadow response, you know, talking to individual governors to kind of try, try to manage the thing as best as they could. But it, but I mean, it was a, that's not the way you manage a pandemic. It's like fighting a war by giving each of the 50 states an army and, and sending them out to go do whatever they do. So they knew what was around the corner and they were trying to tell uh, the government, trying to tell the president, trying to tell whoever uh, what was about to hit, not only the US, but the rest of the world. Why didn't we listen to them? So they knew in two senses. They knew that this was a, uh, this was a risk, that was a growing risk, that there was an increased likelihood this would happen. But they knew in a more specific way that in January, uh, Carter Mesher is, is doing extraordinary things in Wuhan, China, to figure out what's actually happening. And by January 20th, he has a, a bead on both the transmissibility and the lethality of the virus, which, which would have triggered, should have triggered all kinds of responses in the government. Um, and, and what happens is, you know, the, what we learn is that, that at least in this country, one, we don't really have a, a public health system. We have 5,000 disconnected local public health officers who, who, who are, you know, some are brave and some are not, some are smart and some are not. But that, the, our, that we learned that our federal institution that was set up to, to deal with this, the Centers for Disease Control, wasn't actually equipped to engage once the shooting started. It had, beco it had become a kind of a risk averse, more academic institution. And, and so what happens is the institutional response is, is to not want to hear it. And I think it was because they, they knew they sensed to some level they actually couldn't deal with it. Yeah, quite incredible. I mean, it won't surprise you then that a report by the uh, World Health Organization released today found crucial flaws in the global response to the pandemic. And of course, it wasn't just America, was it, that, that got so much wrong so early on? I mean, we, we, we have the same problems here in the UK. No, no, it's amazing how similar we are. It, it, that, that in June of 2019, a group of experts ranked all the countries in the world according to their pandemic pre preparedness, their ability to deal with the pandemic. And the United States was number one and the United Kingdom was number two. And the United States has 4% of the world's population. We now have 20% of the deaths. And the only country we can point to and say, maybe we did a little better than them is you. And the book ends in, in quite a depressing fashion, doesn't it? Because your group of experts say that uh, this was almost a trial run. There, there is worse possibly to come. So it's, it's depressing. It's, it, was, it was an absolutely thrilling book to write because the characters were so good. I mean, it felt like a story. But, but their view of the matter is we got lucky. That, that it could be it it could and will be worse in the sense that it could be more transmissible, it could be more lethal in children, um, and and it could be just generally more lethal. And and as one of my characters said, the woman who sits at the center of the book, Charity Dean, says, um, 
you know, Mother Nature may have given us a gift because she's awakened us to the, the, these, these fundamental weaknesses in our systems that if we don't correct, we're doomed. So what's the, the overarching lesson then, do you think, that uh, people who read the book will, will take away? I think that they'll take away mainly, I mean, this is going to sound strange, delight in the story because the characters are doing such amazing things. But it, it's a story, it, the, the takeaway is, this is what happens when you have extraordinary people in a broken system. And, and when the extraordinary people are doing what they need to do to try to save lives, they end up by their deeds sort of describing what's broken about the system. Uh, you do uh, uh, write some fascinating books. And of course, you've had a huge amount of success. You mentioned the big short, the film. Do you think this will be turned into a movie? Have you, have you got signed any deals yet? I have <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, Universal Pictures uh, bought it and I... I'd kind of be surprised if it isn't made. I don't usually say that about my books. I usually think they go into a black hole and they may never come out. But I think in this case, yes, I think it will probably be a movie.